Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Super 7, the worst figurine showcase. Um, although this one's a little bit different than the previous ones. Uh, in the previous ones, I suggested that while I enjoy the high detail nature of these figures, uh, I feel that a lot of the detail was lost in the fact that well, they're all pink or blue or purple or you know whatever pack you end up getting. Uh, the fact is that they're all one color, and while I enjoy this uh, this aspect of them, it keeps it very nostalgic to the original uh, muscle figures of the 1980s. The fact is, uh, as it is now, they're just uh, pink dudes. They're, they're just pink. That's that's all there there is to it. Uh, so I kind of took it upon myself to figure out how to paint these guys and I was hoping that well through my YouTube channel here I was sh I would share with you how I did it so uh, bear in mind the fact that you're painting on a collectible uh, but that said I actually uh, had a fine result here this one's one of my favorite characters uh, the Cortex commander I really enjoy his brain there and uh, all of his medals it, they really pop now that I've painted them properly oh, can I alliterate anymore uh, here we go. Here's Captain Deadstar. Oh, he's uh, got a nice, fine, flaming sword there. He's just a uh, skull in a nice battle of suit. Ooh, and he's got a golden peg leg. I didn't know that because he was pink before. So, as you can tell, I really enjoyed painting these guys. Uh, really, definitely uses my art degree to a fine, fine. Uh, oh, I'm amused. Uh, my camera just caught the the face of this and it's tracking it now. This is she, Dusa. Um, yeah, she's a snake demon thing, snake naga god thing. She shapeshifts, whatever. Um, that's very cool. Is she? Uh, yeah, I'm very amused by that. So I was just going to go over there and track its face the entire time. That that just shows how well I painted that. Uh, so anyway, today I'm going to do a little bit of a Bob Ross kind of uh, real time, uh, depending on how well my knees uh, take it. Uh, but there will be a f bit of a fast forward in between paint jobs and uh, maybe a couple jump cuts. I don't know. It all depends. Uh, but stick with me and uh, we'll see how well I can paint Franken Ghost. Um, he's fairly detailed, so uh, it should be fairly interesting to see uh, uh, all those drip marks and the chains and whatnot. Uh, I'm really excited. Um, here, move all these guys out of the way. So, the way I do this first and foremost is you. Uh, well, I have this fancy little rig I got from uh, any really any hardware store, uh, any kind of electronic store that has um, soldering uh, supplies. This is technically a soldering uh, uh, kind of jig, jig or something. I don't know, really know what they call it. Uh, I've had it for years, and it's a little bit loose in some spots. The, the little the alligator clips here pop off. Uh, but, you know, it still serves me a good purpose. And uh, as you can tell, I've already painted over it quite a lot. So anyway, all these muscle figures, uh, all the Super 7 figures, they're made out of rubber, and so as such, um, any hole that you make in them with a needle or pen or whatever, it heals right up. So don't worry about it, guys. This is the best way I've figured out how to hold on to one of the these figures uh, and accurately paint it. So there we go. So now we just clamp it onto one of my alligator clips, and there we go. This way I can angle them any which way I want. If I want to keep them upright, I can. I can tilt them sideways and roll them over uh, any which way I really want. So now that I've got him kind of in a good position, I'm going to go outside and depending on how the film goes, uh, I'm going to spray paint this guy and, uh, and basically show you how to primer it. Uh, please go with something that is actually uh, made for models instead of, you know, your house or I don't know, painting signs or whatever, because the, the thicker the paint, the less detail you're going to get. So yeah, um, we're going to go outside, and we're going to paint this guy, and we're going to take it from there. All right, we're back inside now with old Franken Dose, and just in time, it just started to rain, and uh, would have delayed this filming for yet another day, which would not have been good. Anyway, uh, you may have noticed that the lighting has changed ever so slightly. It is now above Franken Ghost here, otherwise it would have... Uh, well, he would not have shown up on the background I have. Uh, it's a fine choice of colors uh, for a primer, I must say. Uh, that was definitely an oversight on my part. But, uh, yeah, it all worked out here because, uh, yeah, you can see him. Anyway, uh, we're going to be painting this guy, Old Franken Ghost, in the style of the Ed Repka artwork, which appear on the trading cards, which I showcased earlier. Uh, but, yeah, I chose this design uh, because uh, it's more easily uh, conveyed. It's... Uh, 
It's a ghost Frankenstein. So anyway, uh, we're going to paint him uh, using Reaper paints. Uh, I got a whole massive like uh, multi multiple pack. Uh, it came in a nice little carrying case. Um, and I, I was recommended these, uh, the Master Series Bones paint. Uh, I was recommended this uh, through a website, uh, which case uh, they were painting similar figures, the muscle figures, uh, the little rubber dudes, and um, I really wanted to do the same thing to the, fi uh, the worst figures here. So uh, we're going to be painting them using a variety of different colors um, and using a variety of different uh, style of brushes. Uh, and hopefully throughout I will be able to share some of my knowledge about how to paint uh, to you. Uh, we will be using a very fine, narrow paintbrush here, as well as a slightly thicker brush. I do most of my paintings in these two sizes. Uh, that said, uh, let's just start off with a nice base coat. Uh, what I want to start off here, uh, uh, what I want to point out is uh, when you start to paint figures like this, you want to start with the uh, autofocus. Autofocus? Okay. Anyway, uh, you're going to want to start with the lowest lying parts, uh, the smallest parts which you can't get to otherwise without uh, painting along other items. So let's say you want to paint the inside of his mouth after you've painted his face. Well, of course you're going to stick your brush into his mouth, but all that paint's going to show up around his mouth, paint his teeth, and not you're not, not going to have a good time. So uh, when I start painting this, uh, I'm going to start with probably the eyes, the mouth, uh, a few of the other low lying areas. Um, I'll probably start with the shoes, but then I'll work up from there. Uh, but yeah, so that's primarily what I'm be, I'll be doing now. Uh, I won't be doing any dry brushing or different layering, but I will be starting off with some more dark colors to start off with, and then we'll be going to light colors. And I'll share that with you when it comes up. So uh, let's get started. Okay, I've got a little bit of red paint on my paper plate and we're going to paint his mouth and his eyes to give him a nice uh, bloodshot eye look and the hungry, you know, hungry for revenge look, I suppose. So let's see, next color, next color. What do we have here? Um, okay, I'm going to say that his... Uh, his jacket here is going to be the next choice. Um, so let's see, what color should we do that? Um, let's, let's do that in some purple. So give him some real good, uh, bright, happy colors. He's a really, he was a really bright, happy dude uh, that Dr. Frankenstein brought back to life. Uh, but unfortunately, somebody chained him up and tied him into a swamp, and now he's out for revenge. But, you know, in the height of his day, he, he had he had some uh, really nice performing clothes. Didn't, didn't Frankenstein perform for a while? I don't know. I may be thinking of uh, young Frankenstein and how that I think about it. Mm, put him on the Ritz. Okay. All right, next we're going to be painting his, basically his skin tone, uh, which will be kind of a green, dark green, light green uh, mix. Uh, I'll first go all over it with a dark green and then kind of do a, a uh, kind of a light wash over it with a light green, kind of give him a, a, a kind of, a, I don't know, Frankenstein look, I guess. Uh, hopefully he won't look too, too green. Uh, I might uh, uh, dilute this just a touch um, now that I think about it. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of gray. Uh, let's see, what kind of gray do we have around here? Uh, here we go. Here we go. We have some cloud gray. I'm going to mix in with uh, some turf green. So let's uh, get on that. Now, when mixing colors, let me zoom out just a little bit. When mixing colors, it's always a good idea to have a little pool of both color types separated uh, by a, uh, let's say, a no man's land. And let's say you want to have primarily a green color. Let's scooch a little bit of that off to the side here, make a little tail, and then bring in a little bit of gray. There we go. And then mixing the two colors here, I can control how much, well, if I don't tilt the plate too much to show you, uh, but I can control how much of both get into the mix. And it's always important to remember to roll your, your paintbrush a little bit to get all of the uh, spare paint out of there uh, and mixed in. 
And there we go. That's a nice kind of sickly color and perfect for uh, old Frankenstein here. So let's zoom on in and uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to start with his hands to see if I got the right color here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I might have to do a second coat on this. Uh, is this my big brush? No, this is not my big brush. I should have used my big brush. Why didn't I use my big brush? Why? Okay, dry that out. And we will continue. I promise this will be a lot more interesting uh, than watching paint dry. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't know what you people like. But this is what I like. I like to paint little things. Have a little bit of fun. Now the reason why I decided to put him on a little pin is so I could get to hard to reach angles like this. Uh, and also I'm using my own hand to stabilize my hand, otherwise you'll end up getting a uh, kind of a rocky start if both hands are moving independently. So it's best to kind of like lock fingers or maybe just like steady your hand on the table and, and just go with that. But that's how I primarily uh, paint. Uh, I paint a lot with my hands. I mean, not I don't paint with my hands, but I grab my painting a lot and I, I take it off of the easel and uh, and I just kind of manipulate it like this. Uh, it's kind of a, a weird way to say that, but uh, yeah, I mean, take art into your own hands, I guess. <laughs> I say as I'm painting uh, Frank and Ghost's hands. That's kind of weird, right? All right, now that we've got the dark green in, we're gonna be adding in a little bit of Naga green along with a little bit of pure white to get kind of a uh, kind of a pasty green uh, when uh, shown underneath, when shown over the dark green. We're gonna be doing a slight dry brush here. We're gonna be taking a, a more flat brush. In fact, we're gonna be using the uh, two brush from the Reaper series. Uh, it's a kind of a flat brush uh, we have well, if I ever used it, gotta gotta bend the bristles uh, when you when you first buy something. Uh, but yeah, the bristles here are uh, kind of in a nice uh, flat line. You, there we go. We can see that. So that way you're able to, to uh, you'll be able to get a nice wide area with this brush. Now this is not very interesting because it's a flat area and a lot of the paint will show up anyway. Uh, but it's best just to just kind of brush over it lightly anyway if you're doing the same for the other parts of the body. Now we can see his face is kind of like, it's still sort of the dark green. That's because of the, the light green just ever so slightly touched up his, his overall shade. Um, but it hasn't had the overall effect that we've we've desired here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white to the to the mix. And we're gonna add a couple little highlights up on the top of his his brow. Just to kind of bring his face out a little bit more. There we go to his nose. And we won't get his his upper jaw 
or yeah, his upper jaw, just because that uh, will overpower his his um, overpower his underbite. <laughs> his hands a little bit more, a little more splotchy there. And also uses an excuse to cover some of the spots I missed the first time through with the dark crane. And there we go, we got a little bit of a, a little decaying patch on the back of his hand there. It's nice, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so that's roughly what we're going to be doing for the rest of the, the paint. We're going to add um, uh, undercoat, usually darker, and then we're going to add in a, a little overcoat that's usually lighter. Um, and rinse and repeat. It's pretty much the same deal from here on out. Uh, my knees are getting a little tired right now, um, and so we're going to probably do a big jump cut here, um, mainly because I want to film this um, at, at another time, uh, also because uh, of my knees. Uh, so we're going to be doing a jump cut. Alright, we're back here with Frankie, and as you can see, he's coming along quite nicely. It's a lot easier to paint him when I'm not uh, crouching behind a camera. Who knew? So anyway, uh, his shoes, pants, and hair are all painted. I decided not to do a dry brushing on any of these, uh, at, well, for now. Uh, I believe I'll do some uh, mud splattering for his boots and some sort of like dripping effect for his, his coat and clothes. You can see there's a variety of like drips and things all over him, kind of. He's like in a perpetual state of like drowning or coming out of the water or something uh, because he's a ghost. Um, or something. I, I don't know. He's a really ambiguous character, but I, I like him for that. Um, but yeah, so basically I'll be, I'll be going through and uh, painting all these drips uh, to kind of like highlight that fact. Um, and also, um, yeah, uh, I, I decided to uh, paint in a few of the more details here, like the keyholes and the chain here on the front and on the back. Whoop, whoop. Out of chain, out of shot. There we go. I just kind of dabbed a lot of paint in there, and the overall, uh, I'll just dry brush over the top of that, and it should come out in a while. Uh, we'll see how that comes out later on. But yeah, so uh, that's Frankie so far, and uh, we'll be doing another jump cut, uh, and we'll see how far I progress. There we go. Frankie's looking quite dapper with the red jacket there and bright shining eyes. I think the yellow and red combination worked out quite well here. I wasn't too sure about that. I, I thought uh, he might look a little odd, but in indeed he looks quite monstrous instead. So uh, yeah, if, in case you had noticed, I also went through and touched up some of the chains here with white uh, just before I go over it with silver. Uh, just because it's a little bit easier to paint over this uh, in a kind of uniform color as opposed to a blotchy blue and red all over it. But yeah, so uh, I didn't get all the chains. There's a few back here that aren't fully done, but it should be enough to where it's not too noticeable unless I point it out to people. Mm. Um, but yeah, anyway, I uh, also did his belt buckle and his shoelaces. Let me see. There we go. Now the shoelaces. So he's ready to, uh, to mingle with everybody. Uh, up next is uh, his silver accents. I believe I will do his uh, chin in kind of the same color as his uh, chains and whatnot. Uh, and then, last but not least, the dripping. So, stay tuned. Alright, so I definitely painted this guy a whole lot more in between jump cuts than I intended to. Uh, but once I got into the groove of doing things, I just went with it. So, I did all the details in one go. Woo! So, uh, yeah, basically doing all of the chains here and there, all the individual links was really difficult, really uh, taxing. Uh, because once I were to turn this guy around, a uh, little bits of white from the primer would show up and almost make me regret uh, painting things white to begin with. But never mind, never mind. Um, that was really interesting. Very it adds a lot of detail to this guy that I didn't intend to. It kind of blends into his pants, but definitely shows up on his shirt. And uh, it's just a nice contrast overall. Uh, zooming in here a little bit, we can see the finer details of these drips that I was talking about the entire time, but you know, you probably couldn't see because of the pink under figure or the white under figure that I used here. Uh, but yeah, so basically I had a little bit of paint that I applied to the underside of the drips and then with actual water I was able to blend it up with the rest of the body. Uh, I also had a little bit of fun having it drip out of his mouth there because, you know, he, to me it seemed like he was just coming out of the water. So the drips made sense. Uh, in fact, I had a whole bunch of watered down paint and added it to his head and let it drip down naturally. In fact, uh, I think you can see that a little bit better on the back side. There we go, yeah. 
uh, a little bit on this side. So uh, it's very cool, a lot of nice detailing here that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise, but I really enjoy painting this. Um, very interesting, um, oh, I almost forgot his muddy boots. I pictured him walking out of a, a swamp, so that's why I had to, had to have muddy boots for the guy. So yeah, um, let me zoom out a little bit more. Um, yeah, uh, I really enjoy painting the this uh, the worst figure. Uh, definitely turned out into uh, turned into the best figure in my opinion. Uh, I will definitely be painting more of these guys in the future, and uh, I'll probably have a roundup uh, later on to show you all the fine details of all the the random Super Seven figures that I have. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, if you like this kind of content, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. It took me a long time to do this, so please uh, give me some shout outs. Uh, and uh, yeah, until next time, bye.